Howdy folks, welcome back to the channel. This morning, you've seen me do it in the past, I'm going to be ordering my breakfast from Tim Hortons using the Tim Hortons app. And the reason why I'm using this this morning is because yesterday I had a customer give me a $25 Tim Hortons card. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I think I'm going to treat myself to some breakfast at Tim Hortons. Guys, stay tuned to the channel. So just like that, we are in and out of Tim Hortons, so I've got my breakfast, time to get to work. So guys, I did tell you that we were going to be buying some vehicles. But what I didn't tell you was that a lot of them were gonna be Hyundai product. Take a look. This is a 2012 Hyundai Elantra, it's a GLS. We picked that up at the auction the other day. And along with the 2014 Chevy Cruze and the 2014 Ford Fiesta, we also got a 2013 Hyundai Elantra GLS as well as a 2012 again. So yes, there was apparently a sale on Hyundai Elantras, but you don't go looking always for one specific vehicle, you go looking for vehicles, and vehicles that sell, Hyundai Elantras are one of them. We have very good luck with these cars, and they're very affordable to the average consumer. Because we've been so busy with our sales on the lot and selling lots of vehicles, we've also got a couple of trade-ins. Take a look at this little gem here. This is a 2003 Ford Taurus, and from what I can see, she's in really good shape. Over here, we've got ourselves a 2003 Echo. Again, looks like it's in pretty good shape. Now, I did notice yesterday when we had uh, the customers here, we did a little bit of an appraisal and there is some blistering on that fender. Looks like he was a Grateful Dead fan. And the rocker panel down here has seen better days. However, depending on what we find mechanically for this vehicle will ultimately depend on whether or not we're going to keep it or send it to the auction. And the same goes for the Ford Taurus. But there's always a market for cheap vehicles when you're in the used car market. This is income tax season. You've got people out there looking to spend $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. You got to have those cars to satisfy them too. So we're going to take a walk inside. We'll go over a few more details on these vehicles so that you guys can stay up to date.
as I said, I was going to go over these vehicles so that you knew a little bit more about them. So the 2014 Chevy Cruze is an LT model, which means it comes fully loaded. It is automatic and it has the uh, 1.4 liter turbo in it. With only 90,000 kilometers, it should be a very good seller for us. The 2012 Elantra, which was the one that we showed you out front, again, it's a GLS, has 143,000 kilometers or about 85,000 miles. And being a GLS, it's got the sunroof, it's got the aluminum wheels, and it even came with four winter wheels and tires. Uh, this one is a six-speed manual, and it has um, all the options again. GLS, fog lights, it's uh, sunroof, all the, all the goodies are there with the 2012. We've also got the 2014 Ford Fiesta. It's an SE, so again, loaded with options. It's got uh, power windows, locks, cruise tilt, air conditioning. Um, it may even have a backup camera. I'll have to double check and verify on that one. But very well equipped uh, with that one and only 95,000 kilometers. The 2013 Elantra, which is the light gray one, has 70,000 kilometers. Again, it's a GLS, so it's loaded up really nice. And then the 2000, the other 2012 Elantra, which is the white one, a little bit higher mileage, 172,000 kilometers, which works out to about 109 or 10,000 miles. And uh, again, a very, uh, very well equipped car. So I don't think we'll have any trouble getting rid of these vehicles. Um, they always have been popular sellers. This is the very first time I believe that we've had four Hyundai Elantras on our lot at any given time. So hopefully somebody will find something they like um, when they're coming out looking for Elantras. So this is my niece's car and it's broke down. I didn't feature this car in any of my vlogs, not for any other reason than we basically bought it at the auction one day, brought it home, pre-sailed it, and my niece bought it. So she's been going to school and she's about uh, two and a half hours away from here. She's young, she's all alone, she doesn't know anything about cars, but uh, she's home for a work practicum as part of her course for two weeks and the car breaks down here. What are the chances of that happening? Anyways, we got the car back to the shop thanks to Dale Matheson at Matheson's Towing. And what we think has happened is the timing, tension, timing chain tensioner, which is basically that pulley right there, has failed. We're not sure specifically how many teeth the belt may have jumped when it went slack, but what we do know is that it's not starting. So if anybody knows anything about these Ford engines, there's a couple of things. So one, they have the VVT or the variable valve timing cam solenoids. And the crank has no keyway, so there's no specific marking on the crank on which way that crank pulley has to be marked. So what you've got to do is with a handful of special tools and a lot of uh, research on Google and YouTube to find out how to set the timing on this thing once we get that timing chain tensioner or timing belt tensioner replaced. So I guess I'm the type of guy who always looks at the bright side of uh, every situation and the bright side of this situation is thank goodness that this happened while she was home and not away because if it was away she'd have been stuck paying for a repair that uh, she really can't afford to pay for. And with a garage we don't know anything about. So it's here, she's home for another week, we're hoping to get this uh, fixed up for her uh, the first of the week. That way she can get back on the road, get back to school, and hopefully have some worry-free driving. So while we're in there, we're also going to replace the timing belt because that is part of your regular maintenance. If you're driving a car that has a timing belt, tell me down in the comment section below, when was the last time you changed it, or if you ever changed it. They're not a very expensive belt. Uh, however, the job itself is something that uh, leaves much to be desired, especially on these cars. And I think the uh, probably the Ford uh, Focus is probably very similar uh, with their engines as well and some of the other ones that we've had to deal with. But anyway, it is what it is. We're going to get her up and running and hopefully have her back on the road in no time.
and an update on the 2010 Mazda Tribute. The parts have finally come in. So the first of the week, once we get my niece's car out of the way, we'll tackle the Mazda Tribute one more time. And again, hopefully, fingers crossed, have that ready for the lot by the end of the week. So guys, I appreciate you tuning in and watching and uh, leaving all the comments and uh, hitting that thumbs up because you're doing it all a lot more lately. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that little red button right down here. What that does is that makes sure that you're gonna be notified that I've uploaded a new video. It does nothing else. It doesn't send you spam emails. It doesn't send you jokes. It doesn't send you nude pictures, nothing like that. Don't worry. It's all good, good stuff. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Statistics tell me that only about 48% of you that watch my videos are actually subscribed. Thank you very much for you guys, but if you haven't done it yet, please consider doing so. There's four links in the description box below if you guys would take a look at those. The first one being bonfire.com and that is the link to my merch store. If you want to support me other than just watching my videos, you can buy Old Car Auto Guy t-shirts and or hoodies. Lots of sizes, many colors to choose from and then deliver it right to your door. Also, don't forget, I'm still collecting license plates. If you've got spare license plates hanging around that you're not using and you feel inclined to send them my way, my addresses are down below if you're in Canada or the US or anywhere around the world. Both addresses are there. I hope you can take time to send something out to me so that we can add to our wall art project, which we will be coming back to very, very shortly. Guys, I end every video by saying this. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you so much. God bless. Let's do it again real soon. Yeah.